Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyle. I'm Glenn and today we're going to talk about setting up the sonar on the HDS Live Lawrence unit. They're top of the line fish finder, very capable machine, lots of settings, lots of features. So let's get into it and learn how to set this thing up so it's going to give you the best results for your fishing. So let's check it out. Alright, in this video we're going to be covering how to set up your sonar for best performance. We did cover the basic setups of this unit in another video and the link for that is down below so check that out for your basic setups when you first take it out of the box. Uh, this one we are going to talk about the sonar and all the different sonar features and functions and how to set them up and we will have another video so check for the link down below when that's available for your chart plotter setup and we'll go through in detail how to set that up and the waypoints and routes and what have you so check for the link down below when that video is available but let's get started okay so we're going to want to start with the home screen this is where you have all your icons on the display for the different features and functions of course you got your sonar there which you can access by tapping that we're also going to be touching that power button in the lower right hand corner to get to system controls for some setting. So let's get started. I hit the sonar button and it comes up with a screen and the menu. You see the menu off to the side here. I hit the pages button in the upper corner. You can see the cog that'll get us to system controls or hitting the power button. Then we hit settings in the system controls menu. That'll bring up your sonar uh, settings and choices. Now most of these you can leave alone unless you are tying in multiple displays that kind of thing. Uh, if you are they're pretty self-explanatory you just go through and turn each on or off uh, by clicking on the bar. Again my recommendation is if you're uh, using a single unit with a single transducer uh, there's really no need to get into this and make these changes at first. You can go in and customize later once you get more familiar with the machine. There are things like uh, sonar log setups and key offsets, that kind of thing. So if you do need to do setups, like I said, they're very self-explanatory. Just run through and make the adjustments by clicking on each of the lines. Okay, now let's get started on the menu-driven, the screen menu-driven options. So when you hit the button and the sounder option comes up, you can see here on the right side of the screen that you've got a menu bar that pops up and gives you all different kinds of options. This first one is a setting to set the general parameters for the best options for shallow, fresh, deep, slow troll, fast troll, clear water, and ice fishing. So it's going to set the basic parameters up to give you the best image possible for each of those scenarios. The general is a good one to start with if you're not fishing one of those other specific patterns or types of fishing. Next is range. Now range, um, it, if you set it in an auto it's going to work just fine, but I actually, if you're not changing depth too rapidly, I like setting it for a maximum depth that you're going to see in the area. That just keeps the screen from jumping around and zooming in and out, making it harder to really get a perspective of what you're looking at. If you set this depth, you can see it's just as it's running across the screen there, it's running, it's not jumping around and you're getting a good, straight, easy image to read. You can even set a custom range by hitting the custom button down at the bottom of the menu there and you can set your upper and lower limits. So we'll cancel out of that and go back on the menu and the next item is going to be the frequency. Uh, now it might default to 200 kilohertz, uh, but it's got all the different possible frequencies. Depending on the transducer you have, you're going to want to select the one that's best for your fishing area. Uh, generally the 200 kilohertz or high chirp is going to work best in shallower water. 50 kilohertz or medium or low chirp are going to be better in the deeper water. So keep that in mind. And keep in mind that I'm saying deeper is going to be 100 feet or more, generally speaking. Okay, and then we'll go back. And next option you're going to see is sensitivity. Sensitivity is a slider. Again, you're going to want to leave that in auto. Uh, it's probably your best bet for 90% of the time. Unless you're seeing some snow or clutter on the screen, you're not going to want to reduce or increase the sensitivity. All right, so we're going to hit the back button, go back to the menu, and next is 
Contrast, same thing with contrast. Auto is generally going to be just fine for you. If you're finding you're not getting a good reading, you can play with a slider and adjust it. But 90% of the time, contrast can be just fine in the auto mode. Okay, now we'll go back and go to the advanced settings, which is down at the bottom of the menu there. Noise is the next option. That's going to be if you get streaks on your depth sounder, you'll make adjustments to medium or high. Otherwise, keep it at low or off. And those streaks would be like vertical lines going down the screen, usually caused by electrical interference. Next is scroll speed, and you can adjust that by a slider again. Again, you're going to want to leave it in default most of the time. The uh, next option is your ping speed, and that's the speed at which it sends a signal down to the bottom and comes back up from the bottom. You're going to want to leave that in auto mode or max as it defaults most of the time. So those are your advanced settings. If you go back, the next is more options way down at the bottom. First one is going to be stop sonar. Push that and it stops the screen and the transmission. You can reset it and then just under that is split screen. You've got no split, you've got a zoom split where you've got a screen portion with a zoomed image of the bottom. You've got a bottom lock where it locks into the bottom and keeps that in the on the screen. And then you got a flasher that gives you an interpretation of what's in your beam real time. Next is palette and you get to choose what color scheme you prefer for this particular screen. Matter of personal preference. You can run through and see what you like the best. After that we've got overlay by with down scan. This takes your down scan image and overlays it on your traditional. Nice feature but we're going to show you one that I prefer later on. Just below that is temperature graph. Now this, if you look at the top of the screen, you see a line up there. It's a straight line because the temperature hasn't changed in the simulator mode, but it'll actually graph your temperature and show you changes. And it'll tell you what that temperature range is by scale on the right-hand side. Uh, depth line, you hit that one, and it's going to draw a black line right where the depth reading is taking place and has taken place over time. Next is a feature I really like. It's your A-scope. It's actually showing you what's in your beam real time. So if you want to see fish as they actually enter the beam, they will pop up as red lines uh, between the top of the screen and the bottom reading. Also really good for reading what kind of bottom you're over, whether it's soft or hard sand. Pulling the menu up, you'll see preview. And there's two options, cursor only and always. If you tap the screen wherever you want the preview, um, to pop up at the top screen there, it'll do it from wherever the cursor was back and show your history. Um, you can have cursor only, you can have always, and it'll just draw a history of your bottom picture at the top and miniature at that top bar. Really nice. Then you got Fish ID. Fish ID you can leave off, uh, which most pros do. You can have uh, symbols to show fish of varying sizes depending on the size of the feedback. You've got depth, where it'll give you the depth of each of the fish, or you can select both, where it gives you both a symbol and a depth for each of the markings. Last on the menu line is Fish ID Beeps, and last and probably least because it's my least favorite. Uh, it beeps every time it identifies a fish, and it drives me nuts, so you may want to leave that one off. Well, that's it for the standard sonar menus and setup features and functions. We are going to have a video to break it up and make them not so long. We've got another video that we'll post and we'll have a link down below in the setup and um, menus of the side scan, down scan, and live view functions that this machine is capable of. So stay tuned for that video. We're also going to cover a video have a separate video on your chart plotter setup and the different menu functions on that and how to set it up. So stay tuned for that. Links for both those videos will be provided down below as soon as they're available. So stay tuned. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when those are posting. Like and subscribe. Uh, please remember to hit the like button. It helps our logarithms and helps the channel a great deal. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, stay tuned for more. And we'll see you back here soon. Thanks so much for watching.